start with AJ. Uh, go ahead and raise your hand, and we'll call on you that way. We go to Rachel. Hi, AJ. Uh, there have been a handful or exactly a dozen times this season that Scoople has had a fifth day of rest, so I'm curious if you've noticed from a personal perspective how he's been able to take advantage of uh, that and not turn it into a rest first for us situation. Yeah, so we, we've done this um, pretty much all year. I mean, there's been a handful. It's actually a handful of starts on a regular rest. And we haven't really seen a pattern either way. I mean, he's fully rested. It changes his routine. We've been able to give him as much notice every single start, so it doesn't change. Uh, we don't ambush him with extra rest or ambush him with short rest. And, and, and I think that for a guy who is – you know, pretty regimented in his program. He's allowed to tailor it based on the rest and, and recovery. So, I mean, listen, he's going to come out uh, fully ready to go. I mean, this guy will will answer, um, you know, the challenge and give his best and and give us what he can, regardless of, of the situation we put him in with rest. But um, you know, he's, he's, he's been great either way. And as a follow-up, I know – recently you've discussed but it's been a theme all season when you have these bullpen games it's kind of an inning, inning by inning read you're not coming in with that much planned out per se but when you do have Tark on the mound does that take away some of the adrenaline early on for you personally just knowing you've got a little ways to go I mean not in the playoffs because you have to I mean I've managed a lot of playoff games with high-end starters where you know you got to be alert and read the game as much as you can um and so I think these games bring a sense of urgency from the get-go, regardless of who you're pitching and, and regardless of your, your predetermined plan. I mean, in a perfect world, um, I get to sit back and watch, you know, arguably the best pitcher in baseball do his thing. But um, we still got to do a lot of work and a lot of prep to be ready to, to audible um, either way. I mean, the big decisions are coming at this time of year, regardless with how you get there. Um, so it doesn't really change me. Yeah. Man, you're going to make me say positive things about Matt Boyd yeah. before game two. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, uh, I mean, everything that has been said about him, you know, um, really can only be positive. I mean, this guy was an anchor on a team that was trying to find its identity. Um, certainly on the pitching side, he was asked to be a huge leader as young pitchers were broken in, as, as, as the transition uh, of learning how to, to be a big leaguer, to learning how to win. He was instrumental in, in, in pouring some of this foundation. And to a man, everybody loves Matt Boyd. You know, he was the opening day starter. Um, I got the chance to have a meeting with him and name him that. Uh, I also had him take um, a leadership role on, on these first teams that I had that, that have the names now we know, Tarek and Casey and um, and others that, 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 you know, as a veteran stability piece to a team that, that, that desperately needed it. So, um, I, you know, baseball is incredible. It leads, like I said, I've said this last series, it leads you to sometimes familiar places, and this one's leading us to a familiar face in a, in a really big game against somebody who, um, you know, we all respect and admire. Uh, we'll turn that off for a couple hours, you know, as we get to the competition, but... Uh, I'm, I'm proud to know Matt Boyd and, and proud to have crossed paths with him in, in, in our careers. Any questions, Chris? Yeah, hi, AJ. Hey. Uh, this, this backs against the wall thing. Um, it's, it's kind of it's not new. You guys have been, it feels like you've had your backs against the wall since August. But I wonder in this situation, what's the balance you have to walk? with a young team, young hitters who, you know, a small sample size, but are struggling a little bit to, you know, be between overreacting and lighting a fire in a situation yeah. like this. Well, first off, I challenge the premise that your back's against the wall. I mean, this isn't an elimination game. We want to win every game, but we don't even come to the ballpark today with that sort of um, mindset. I mean, that's a defeatist mind. I'm saying you are. I'm just saying in general, I'm not going to have a team that, 
that uh, that ever panics. So we're gonna we're gonna show up to prepare and pretty upbeat clubhouse. We're gonna have an upbeat workout. We're gonna be prepared to play um, important games, just like we all expected. And and you know we don't get caught up in recency stuff. I mean I understand like you know yesterday didn't go our way and we had a number of strikeouts and we had. Um, a hard time scoring. We didn't score. Uh, we're not too far removed from the most electric inning offensively to, to even get us to this point. So, um, you know, we'll, we, we, we finished yesterday. We reset. We come to today for a clean workout. We get to tomorrow. But um, we don't have a lot of pressure that we're going to bestow on ourselves. We know the situation creates enough of its own. And, and our mindset is to, is to focus entirely on how to – how to how to combat Cleveland and and how long is Matt Boyd going to be in the game and how do we answer this bullpen that 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 we know is famous around the league? Um, that's enough for us to worry about, let alone some self-induced back against the wall mentality that doesn't exist. Thank you. Go to Jason. Yeah, hey AJ. Hey. Uh, Influence on, on some of the guys who came up on, under his watch and, and came up and you know kind of him mentoring them. Yeah, I, I think to, to me to give you a couple things that that remind me of Matt Boyd. And one is the will to win. Like you know, at our leanest moments and and maybe our our lowest times while I've been here, you know, Matt has you know a, a, a winning mindset and a winning attitude, and he always wanted to work towards winning and. Some of that is in an individual way with a pitcher. Like you want to win the days that you start. Some of it is, is built through the second part of, of his influence on this team, which is routine. No one is as, as manic about their routine um, as Matt Boyd. And I think I see that sprinkled across a lot of our pitchers who cross paths with him when it's their workout, it's their arm care program, it's the throwing program, it's the, the diligence in their rehab, it's the learning of a new pitch or at least, at least maybe making some of his pitches a little bit better. Um, those are all common threads that link Matty with, with our, our young pitching that was here when he was here. Um, and it, it, it comes out all the time. Now, how much of that was Matt, uh, Matt's influence versus the, the evolution of young players in the big leagues? And, um, you know, where does Fed and Robin and Juan fit in? I mean, you have to ask the players. But I see similarities, and so I know there's some influence in that um, you know, seeing it from a teammate up close and personal and, and also creating the, 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 the mindset as a starting pitcher that you want to win the days you pitch. Um, you want to win other days too, but when you're actually impacting the game, um, it's a different mindset for a starting pitcher. Now, they told me at the beginning of this series there was no weather problems in Cleveland, and, and I'll believe it when I see it um, at the end of this game tomorrow. Um, but it's all about shadows here and, and how difficult it is to, to transition from daytime to nighttime. Um, it'll be both ways. It's gonna be, it, we know they're going to be there if the sun's out. If it's cloudy, it's, it's less, um, you know, less of an impact. But I, I think the, the, well, it'll be a you know, kind of see it as it goes. Um, literally with the with the shadows. Saw that in a couple games yesterday too at other ballparks. So it's, it's October baseball. Thank you. We'll go to Kennedy. Hey AJ, hey. I mean, this also was really solid for you guys aside from one pitch yesterday. Act really, I mean, how reassuring I guess yeah. is that for you if and when you have to go back to him sometime in these next couple of games as well. Yeah, no, I mean we we think we believe in Reese Olson. We know he's a good pitcher. Um, and, you know, he's allowed to make a mistake here and there. I mean, we, um, we're going to turn to him again, you know, and, and look forward to the next time that he pitches. And um, we'll see if that's somewhere out of the pen or does it, does, do we start him? Um, you know, we'll find out later in the series. But I, I, I think he demonstrated exactly the reason that we wanted the ball in his hand. Um, even at the most critical time, he's nasty. He's got good stuff. He's got great demeanor. Um, he can make adjustments, you know, he's calm, um, nothing's too big for him. So, um, that was all on display and, and, you know, despite the first pitch that he threw on the day, uh, I was very proud of how he threw the ball. Wetzel, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, I, I know, I know you, you were in the system when, when 
Matt Boyd was, was with the Tigers. I, I'm curious that you have any interaction with him. And with the lefty starting, I mean, uh, is it a chance that, that I mean, do you, do you know what kind of um, situation you might find yourself in tomorrow in terms of starting, or you're going to be that switch hitter off the bench? Um, I probably, I faced my boy when I was in the minor. I think he was doing a rehab um, in the rookie ball when I was there. So I think I faced him a couple of years ago. Um, I didn't know what is going to happen yet. I don't know if I'm in the lineup or not. I'm just trying to be ready for tomorrow, no matter what situation might come into it. And then I'm, I'm trying to be my best to help the team. I know your day is your day is just getting started there, but can you get a sense for for the for the, the mindset, the attitude? AJ talked about everybody kind of being upbeat, just like just like you have been all through August and September. Do you, do you feel the same kind of freedom, you know, going into game two? Yeah, yeah, we feel um, the same kind of freedom. But you have to say in the fight, uh, we have to take together. Uh, we just try to keep pushing the ways that we we've been doing it, and then uh, I think um, that you have a pretty good game, the first game. And I think we sh we can do a better job with the uh, offense um, in the in the next game. I think uh, we score on the mount. I think that should be pretty good to have offensive coming up and help them to win the, to win the the, the, ball, the ball game. Thanks, Watson. We'll go to Jason. Hey, Wetzel. Uh, I remember that last day in Houston. You know, uh, Andy talking about how you and him got in the cages as early as the second inning to get ready for potential pinch hit opportunities. And I was curious, how has that transition gone for you to not being an everyday starter? And how helpful has Andy and other guys been in terms of how to prepare for late game situations? Uh, you know, uh, this is my first year in the big league and I'm um, thing I'm thankful we got for the opportunity that um, put me in this situation uh, my first year in the playoffs. I just tried to be um, prepared for any time that AJ and the team need me. And then Andy is um, a guy that he always ready. Uh, I'm always like when I'm on the bench, I'm just trying to be around him because like Andy is just, he's always ready. He just like oh if he saw a left in the pen, he just hey have, uh, we have to go ready because probably. We would come in the game uh, uh, when that lefty come up. So in the second inning, he told me, "Hey, let's go to the K. Let's just stretch out. Let's uh, do some movement and then uh, hit some uh, ball on the machine and be ready for a late situation because I think uh, we will come into the game uh, for him." And, and also um, wondering what kind of challenges do late afternoon games? in ballparks like this create in terms of shadows and how much tougher does it make it to, to see a pitcher, especially you know, a pitcher with a little bit of spin like, like Boyd has? I think for me or for uh, guys, uh, probably that doesn't work with it. I just try to focus on the ball most as I can, see their release. Because sometimes if you look up like around there, probably that kind of like uh, it, that won't help you at all. So I just try to focus most I can on the ball and the release of the pitcher and trying to um, minimize like what I can see and like um, trying to uh, just uh, see if the pitcher's in the sum or something like that. Or if I can see, I just try to make sure uh, it's just probably a pitcher that, uh, that is in the sum. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to Cody. Hey, Wenzel, if you go back to spring training when you moved from infield to outfield, I mean, how did the team kind of present that idea to you, and, and what was the process like for you to make the most out of that? Um, I think um, last year in Dobo, um the manager told me that um, I think Scott wanted me to play in outfield too. Um, I thought was, um, I was uh, going through a tough moment because I was uh, kind of Overthrowing uh, a second base a little, I can't control any of my throws when I was playing second base. And then like AJ uh, told me in spring training that um, I had to play defense to be in the major league. So uh, I think when he told me that, I think 
anything that I was caring about was just different, trying to um, work on my defense the best as it can uh, to help the thing in a situation that um, probably you know, it's going to be a part of. So um, when he told me that I was trying to be um, better in the outfield, better in the infield, trying to uh, adjust those little things that I, I was in know with Josh and uh, the outfield coach too. And then I think um, the confidence with being like uh, with the veteran guys when they were here, um, Javi and Gio, they helped me a lot with, with all the stuff. And then uh, I think uh, I just, uh, every day that I'm playing the outfit right now, I just like feel more confident. And then um, as soon as you start playing even more, it just got that mindset and that momentum that I can go for it for every ball. For sure. Just given that change and then the amount of time and years you spend in the minors, what's it meant to you to, to be a part of this team and this run to the playoffs? Oh, it is, it, this is a, an unbelievable run for us. Uh, I've been through um, the Tiger system my whole life. I've been through all the systems since the uh, Dominican Republic through here. I've been through like up and down a lot, and then like for me to be here now that we just like uh, being part of a winning team, uh, it's just special because like we create we create this um, we uh, the other guys that I played with since uh, we was in the minor league, and then like I think this should be great because like we just like was uh, two years ago playing the minor league together, and now we're here in the postseason playing together and enjoying all those process that we went through in the minor. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah, thank you.